It started off with China's purchasing managers index jumping to an 18 month high uh, in October of 55.4 and that's from a previous reading of 55. Yeah, they were the first to come out and really show that manufacturing was growing um, in a Chinese context and that gave the world uh, you know, a little bit of a, a step up, which is interesting for me because you can definitely see China as a leader through all of this. Mm -hmm. So that economic shift of power that I often talk about, you see it happening in reality. And also people worried about how the Chinese are going to also uh, you know, look to, to rebase their currency. Because it used to be a, a, a dollar peg, now it's a basket of uh, currencies. Whether or not people will look to that in the future as, you know, how, how, should, we, uh, how should we go about it? How should we buy? Um, because also they've recently issued bonds. So it's interesting how people are starting to view China as, as kind of a leader in the future. For the time being, we're going to, you know, revel in the fact that they're um, doing much better than the rest of us, you know, showing nearly 9% growth, mm -hmm. you know, have, have fallen to as low as their, one of their GDP prints had a six in it and everybody was wringing their hands. I think it's, it's more a matter of how do we believe this machine and how do we play off this machine. Well, given that China is expected to pull out the world out of recession, do you think that it's finally going to happen? Do you think it's also going to be a good catalyst to pull South Africa out of recession? And we've also got to keep in mind we've got South Africa's PMI number set to be released today, and uh, we know that we are lagging the rest of the world significantly. Yeah, well, it's, it's simple. Some of our big bulk exports, iron ore, coal, you know, they go to China, mm -hmm. um, make steel products, sell it to the Americans. Um, you know, so it's a bit of a simple equation. But I think, yes, on balance, you know, you get those naysayers out there and I think they're too focused on, on the developed world. Whereas, the, you know, the kind of people who I like to listen to, um, folks like Jim O'Neill, you know, who visits the, 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 the region a lot, he'll be more upbeat, more positive about the Chinese growth story and where we're going with that. Because it's interesting, I heard a fellow say, every time I see Jim O'Neill, he draws forward his um, prediction on when the Chinese are going to overtake the Americans mm -hmm. by you know, just pure round numbers. And his last read was 2027. So I know it's a long way away, but uh, you know, it's less than two decades. Uh, Sasha, looking at the U.S. data that came out on Friday, consumer spending falling half a percent, largely in line with what markets had expected, income flat as well, and many analysts say this is what actually sparked the sell-off on Friday. Do you agree with that? It was actually in line with expectations. Um, I think this week our big data point will be Friday. It will be the non-farm payrolls number. I think everyone will look through the company earnings. It might be a bit of a rocky week. But do you get the sense that analysts and investors are in fact looking past the company earnings and rather to the economic data recently? No, because on balance the company earnings have been better than expectations. So I think it all depends on, on, on company guidance. I know a lot of people are still anxious about lower company revenues. I don't get too anxious about that because I simply say, well, if they're beating on the bottom line, then it must be because they're a lot more efficient now. So when the consumer does come back, and I suspect they will, then we'll start to see um, you know, all the cost-cutting measures that they've put in place start to really bear fruit. So I think people might be surprised with earnings this time next year. Mm. Consumer sentiment in the U.S. slipped to 70.6 uh, from 73.5. Do you think it's, we should be worrying about the U.S. consumer? Look, I think a lot of the reads we've seen in October have suggested that people are starting to lose a little bit of steam. But I, I don't know. I, would, I, I think you can't expect a, a straight road a recovery here. You, you probably would expect a few bumps along the way. So am I anxious? I think the short answer is no. Sasha, also just looking at other news, CIT Group uh, filed for bankruptcy in the US yesterday and apparently those also co caused quite a lot of shockwaves in Asia this morning. It's been happening in the background for ages and ages, I think the better part of six, seven months or maybe even longer. Um, so not unexpected, they just couldn't come to an agreement with some of their bondholders. So I think, yeah, it's never nice to see a company of this size and scale and I think the the specific anxiety will be around who they loan to. They loan to small and medium businesses. So, um, and that's the, the, the spot where it's tough to get a loan now. But there'll be someone who'll buy their book. There'll be someone who'll buy their book at an opportune time. Now, I said the CBOE volatility index jumped 24% to 31, uh, which is quite a significant jump in one day, Sasha. Uh, just looking at gold, which is known as one of those uh, 
rush to safeties, of course, and also just looking at the kind of increases that we've seen in gold prices. Um, I know that you're not really bullish on gold and don't really like the metal that much, but where do you see gold going from here? It's not that I don't like the underlying metals. I don't like the companies that mine them, um, simply because I think they're way overvalued. They don't make mm -hmm. lots of money and their cost pressures are rising. Um, yeah, where do I see? I think there will be an underpin. As there are more entrants into the middle class globally, you'll start to see um, people support that. So say, for instance, the biggest market for, for gold um, is India. So I'm not talking about people who are buying the funds that are associated with then buying the underlying bullion and then putting it in a vault. But I think there will be an underlying demand and also for jewelry into the future as you get more middle class and upper middle class entrance. So I think there will definitely be some sort of underpin. But out of all the commodities, it's my second least favorite. <laughs> Anglo Gold, what is your first least favorite? Diamonds. Uh, diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Anglo Gold Ashanti is set to release uh, quarterly numbers today. Last week we saw Harmony and Goldfields, and obviously a very dire picture that they're painting because mm. we know input costs are rising, a tariff increase by ESCOM looming as well, and the RAND has been very, very strong. Mm. And so everything's not really going in their favor. Mm. I don't know, you know, I mean, if you look at these companies at face value, they look to be much better propositions, not just in uh, the mining sector as a whole, but you know, say precious metals. I, I, and you've long known that I much prefer Impala Platinum over any of these companies, simply because the price looks realistic, the demand looks realistic, and I can understand the fundamentals. The, the great part for me is whenever a chief of a mining, gold mining company is asked, what are the fundamentals for gold? I can never quite understand the answer.